Strip along the roof to let me know. If you're in the front cab, you're going to tap on my window or wave your hand to get my attention. If you drop anything overboard, just keep in mind where you dropped it. We'll send someone to pick it up at the end. That is not a medical emergency. And make sure you remain seated while the tram is in motion. When I come to a complete stop, you're allowed to stand for a few seconds to get that better picture. Once I start moving again, you must sit back down. Now today we're going to be learning a lot about animal adaptations and how that can help them survive in the wild. A lot of these adaptations can actually deter predators from coming after them in the first place, so we're going to be learning a lot about that. Oh, on the left-hand side you're going to see a couple of giraffes. Giraffe are going to reach about 18 feet tall, so very few predators are going to go after them in the first place, especially when they're fully grown. We're going to continue on. We're going to see some more giraffes and we'll be able to see them again on the way back. These are greater flamingos. They live in very exposed regions of salt marshes. So that's why they're going to be a bit more white than uh, what you're expecting. That's going to help them protect them from sunlight off their bodies. Now, a lot of, not a lot of animals are adapted to live in the area that they live in. So they're not really going to have that many natural predators. Not many animal species can survive in those areas. Because of that, they can live in flocks of over thousands. They're going to eat things such as algae and uh, invertebrates in the water. And they're going to use their bill, their beaks as a colander as they go through. It's going to strain out the water and send it behind the boat park. Every time you purchase an admissions ticket or you renew your membership, that money goes to directly funding our conservation projects. We like to focus on eight regions or hubs. We're going to be learning about two of them today. First is the Africa Savannah, and the second is the Southwest Hub, which is here in our own backyard. Just along the wall, right by the metal railing, and another one hiding amongst the boulders. So you can see just the tissues. Now, these are southern right rhinos, so they are the large species of rhino. They're going to weigh about 4,000 pounds. The only other land animals larger than them are going to be elephants. Now they're also the only uh, species of rhino that are social. All other species are very solitary. <laughs> it's made out of it's a protein called keratin. So unless there's something special about your fingernails, there's nothing special about rhino horn. We're going to go slowly because we've got some deer crossing up ahead. These are going to be local mule deer on either side of us. Oh, that's right here. You can see some lovely antlers on the buck on the left hand side. Now, antlers are going to be made out of bone and they're grown annually and shed annually. And all the horns that we're going to see on the antelope today are going to also be made out of keratin. They're going to have a bony core and they grow up with the animal. And if they break off, they're not going to grow back. Now, on the right hand side, we have the bird marsh. Out now, vultures are actually really special for helping keep keeping the ecosystem clean and healthy. They're going to be the cleanup crew. By removing dead carcasses, they remove disease. And their stomachs are strong enough to break down those diseases. They can even break down anthrax in their stomachs. 
reason that they have bald heads to help keep themselves clean if they get anything on their heads. Uh, the sun's going to be able to bake off that bacteria so that they stay healthy. That's just going to help keep them cleaner than if they had feathers. Next door we have Sommering Gazelle, that tan color on top is going to help them to blend in. Now on the left, so notice they have horns, that's because the, uh, this species lives in rather arid regions, not a lot of food and water, so the females are going to need horns as well to help compete for very scarce food resources where they live. And they're going to have those threat masks, those white and black face markings to help look more threatening out in the wild. Basically, if you can scare someone off from a patch of grass or intimidate away a predator from going after you without actually having to fight them, then you don't have to risk injury. Now, something that doesn't look threatening are going to be these ellipse and water buck right at the feeder here. That's because they live in areas with plenty of food and water, more forested areas. So these are all females, and notice they don't have any horns because they don't need them in the areas that they live in. The males are still going to have horns, but that's going to be more for male-on-male -on -male competition and showing off to the ladies. Now they do have uh, some oil on their fur, and that oil is going to help repel water. And they're going to run into the water to escape predators. Hence the name Water Buck. So that's kind of how they deter predators from going after them, by running into an area where, say, they won't be able to get to. Now they're also going to have those threat masks, those white and black face markings to help them look more threatening out in the wild. showing how large they are and how difficult it would be to take them down. If you look right across the road, underneath the tree is going to be a Maasai giraffe. Ooh, giraffe. Put the rest of the herd up ahead, but notice how that giraffe is kind of going after the bark on the trees. So they're actually, uh, their tongues are strong enough to be able to strip the bark from trees. And we've put a lot of wire netting up on some of these to help protect them. But as the ocean breeze comes in, it's going to leave behind all that lovely salt. It's going to create a natural salt lake for them. You see the giraffe? Now that pattern giraffes have that they're so well known for, that um, kind of pattern, that's going to look like sunlight as it comes through the branches. So that's just going to help them to blend in as they stand underneath the trees. Their tongues are also rather impressive. The rule of thumb is about one inch for every foot in height. So if you hold out your arm in front of you from the tips of your fingers all the way down to your elbow, that's going to be about the length of a giraffe tongue. Looks like we got a baby giraffe right there at the feeder. Now take a look at the mane that kind of goes along the nape of their neck. So that's really common amongst different antelope species uh, and horse species as well as giraffes. So that mane's just going to help them to look bigger. And if you can look a little bit bigger out in the wild, then maybe that'll give that predator a second pause about going after you. But hair is a lot easier to grow out than it is to build up muscle. So that's why they have that mane, that, that hair that sticks out. You want to bulk up. That takes a lot of energy. You can really see that mane well on these giraffes right here. As well as on the right hand side. These are what they look like donkeys, but they're not. These are called wild smelly ass. They're going to be one of the most endangered species you're going to see today. The best estimate is about 200 worldwide. But in places like the safari park, they were able to give these guys a second chance to help save them from the edge of extinction. 
but they're also going to have those manes to help them look larger. Now they've also got those stockings, it's going to give you a clue to who they're closely related to. You guess the zebra, that is correct. Oh, on the uh, left hand side, we've got some cape buffalo, so intimidation is everything that they're going to do. Um, they'll do things such as stomping their hooves and mobbing and flipping rocks with their horns to scare away predators. So they really rely on intimidation tactics. They're right at that truck. That's a bachelor herd. Those are young males still growing up. Now, I want you to turn and take a look past these trees. You're going to see a couple of eastern black rhinos. Now we have Aria, a female, and Kendi, a male. They're not quite as large as the southern right rhinos. They're only going to reach 3,000 pounds. But they are still going to use that large size and their horns to their advantage to scare away predators from going after them. In fact, very few predators are still alive today that are able to go after a fully grown rhino. A lot of their natural predators died off in uh, prehistoric times. forest on the right hand side you're going to see some roan antelope. They've got the tan fur and those horns. Now they're also going to have those threat masks, those white and black face markings. Take a look at how the black marking goes over the eye though. That's going to help protect it from the sun. And then it kind of runs into the horn and that's going to help make the horn look longer than it actually is. It's a little bit of an illusion. Yeah. So, pelicans are actually social predators, so they'll go around in groups of two to three to help get the maximum amount of fish. And they're going to use their bills like scoops to get the fish. They don't actually store any fish in them, though. They just use it as a giant scoop. And they live in more forested areas, so they're going to have those white stripes to help break up their outline as they go through the trees. just kind of down the hill by those trees. That's going to be another bachelor herd, just like the greater kudu we saw. So those are young males still growing up. A lot of times the bachelors will actually form those herds for protection as they grow up and practice their fighting skills against each other. Now we've been learning a lot about the Africa Savannah, but we also have the Southwest Hub on the right hand side. It's a really great example of that. We focus on co At the theater, there are going to be some grabby zebras. There's quite a few theories on how zebras earn their stripes. One of them is that they're trying to camouflage not with their environment but with each other. When you have a bunch of zebras standing next to each other, it can be really difficult for predators to count how many there are. There's one start and one end. It confuses them just enough to give the zebras an advantage. That's kind of one way that zebras actually deter predators from coming after them by confusing them, making it difficult to go after them. Them are standing right next to each other, right at the meter. It's really difficult to tell. So that's kind of how it worked. And imagine if it was a much larger herd and they were all packed together. It'd be almost impossible to accurately count them. Crammed at exactly the same height, about 20 feet up. There's not a single leaf below that. That's actually because of the giraffe. They've stripped these trees bare of any leaf below 20 feet. Those trees are growing upwards in an effort to escape their reach.
Now, on the right hand side, you're probably going to see the largest horned cattle, and they're actually domestic cattle from East Africa. Now, the people of East Africa don't use these cattle for meat, they only use them for showing off their wealth. Much like someone would buy a sports car, the people of East Africa have these cattle. Now, take a look at the. Um, those antelopes that are all white with those long curved horns, almost look like unicorns, huh? Those are going to be scimitar horned oryx. So they live out in the desert, so they want to be almost completely white so that they can reflect as much heat and sunlight off of them as they can. Smile. So one way to deter predators from going after you is to live in an environment where there really aren't any predators there. Their main enemy is going to be uh, the elements. And they're walking right along the hillside, giving us the look. That's going to be a male ellipsin waterbuck. So you guys remember, we saw the females earlier. They did get a look at his ladies across the way. He misses them a lot. conservation projects we have here in the southwest region is that of the California condor. So if you guys remember, we saw some vultures at the very beginning. California condors do the same thing. They're going to be the cleanup crew of the ecosystem. By removing dead carcasses, they remove disease. But in the 1980s, their numbers had plumage only 22 total due to habitat loss, poaching, and lead poisoning. So with government permission, we brought them all in for a breeding program. We now have over 500 California condors, with over 300 of them being released back into the wild. You can go and visit some of those condors on the other side of the park, past the Australia walkabout. It's going to be Condor Ridge. You guys see all these little birds walking by with the funny little crowns? These are East African crown cranes. Those crowns are going to help them to blend in amongst tall grasses along river banks. That's where they're going to hang out a lot. So the little crowns are going to look like the tops of grass. We've got a couple of southern rhinos in between the two hills, hiding in the shade of that tree. And another one right at the top of that one hill with a large pointy rock. I want you to take a good close look at the rhino that's standing alone at the top of the hill because she's not alone. She has her baby with her. Her baby just stood up. Oh, it's coming just around. That's going to be Kamaria. Do you guys see her? She's just poking her head out from her mom. She looks really tiny, like just a little boulder about two months old, so she's the newest baby we have. Oh, I think she lied back down on the ground, so she kind of looks like a, a little rock. Oh, there she just stood up again. But don't let her size fool you. When she was born, she was already 125 pounds. And southern rat rhinos grow uh, about 100 pounds per month when they're first born, so she's already about 350 pounds. There's another baby just hiding right next to uh, their mom, right in the shade of that one tree in between the two hills. That baby is about a year old, so a bit bigger than Kamaria. Palm trees. It's going to be a tasty treat for them. Aria, what's a group of drop Become an ally for wildlife. What's an ally? A friend. Now we've learned a lot today about animal adaptations and how that can help survive in the wild. 